see the future of fishing if it goes the way things are going right now? I see just a lot of um, you know hardworking families going out by the wayside, and then just the bigger corporations or the well capitalized, um, you know, taking over. This fleetish round of, of uh, cloud restrictions in May put this somebody of his caliber out of, out of business is it's heartbreaking. Hello everyone, I'm Esther Varda. Thanks for joining us and welcome to Hometown Talents and Treasures. Our goal is to introduce you to citizens who in their own unique way enrich, educate, empower, or inspire others in the community. We are going on location to Gloucester where fish is king and tradition for over four centuries. But recent regulations and environmental changes have forced many multi-generation fishermen to give up their boats and lose their jobs. But with Community Supported Fishing, or CSF, one group is not only trying to keep the local fishing industry alive, but also supplying fresh fish weekly directly to consumers, including a drop-off in Andover and Methuen.
We're inside the processing room of the Fisherman's Wharf in Gloucester. Joining me is Brad Duquette, a volunteer here. Why did you get involved? Well, I, I used to commercial fish myself years ago, um, but it's it's uh, more or less my, my brother who had been fishing for 25 years uh, recently had to sell his boat because of the last round of regulations and uh, you know it's, it's just one of those things where people got to come together and start doing something about it. So we took the bull by the horns and we're making something happen. And talk about how this whole thing came about. We, uh, well, my brother has been working with uh, Vito and his family for quite a few years now and he introduced me to them and we decided that, you know, there's a few models that we could explore to try to get fresh fish directly into consumers' hands and thus we decided that a community supported fishing program would be ideal and where I have an office in Brickstone, we explored that opportunity with the management there and they welcomed it. So the pickup place is once a week, Andover, yes. Brickstone, Andover. Atkinson, New Hampshire. And Atkinson at the farmer's market in Atkinson, New Hampshire, yes. And so people can buy full shares, half shares, how, how Yeah, that? well the way it's structured now is it's a one month commitment. And what you'll do is you can have a full share, which is two pounds of fish per week. And you pre-purchase it for a month, so it equates to, I think it's $12 a pound, so $96 a month. And then you can do a half share as well, which is $48. But, you know, the, and some folks may think that the price is a little higher than what you normally find, but frankly, it's, it's really not the case because, you know, again, you're buying, you're supporting the local community. And the price of, price of fish locally, you know, it's, it's actually fairly competitive. So we're, we're up and you're getting it. fresh. It's a great every product. Week. I mean, it's it's been amazing. The amount of testimonials that we've gotten from people that have been participating, it's just been phenomenal. So we couldn't be more ecstatic. So we just just got to try it. And you don't have people leave usually. So, you know, you get you get folks that, you know, try the hat or cod and they come back and say, oh, I can't get over how, how it, it, it's a whole new product to them because they're so accustomed to buying stuff that's it's old, <laughs> you know. It's 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 not a it's not hours old. It's possibly even weeks old. So you you know you want and you don't know what country you don't know where you're getting it from. You have no idea. So this way, you know, I mean, they, the the family here has done a phenomenal job of making everything extremely transparent, and we want that because it's a story, and we want to get the story out there. And if we can help people like my brother potentially get back into the business and keep other families in business, that's a win-win. How devastating was this for your brother and for your family? I mean, 20, 25 years yeah. fishing, um, livelihood gone. You know, I think the, one of the harsher realities of it is he was one of the ones that we, you know, you ask any fisherman in town here in Portsmouth, he was one of the ones that was going to really try to hold on as long as he could. So the fact that this fleetish round of, of uh, cod restrictions in May put this, somebody of his caliber out of, out of business is it's heartbreaking. You know, it's devastating for the whole family, it's devastating for him, and uh, you know, it, it's just got a huge impact on everybody that, that knows him. You know? What is it about fishing? It's hard work. Yeah. You get up early. Yeah. It's dangerous. But yeah. What is it about fishing? That's a way of life. I mean, I, I've been out of it for a long time, but you know, I still, you still miss it. You know, it's just, a, it's a different, it, it's not a job. It's as I said, it's a tradition, it's a way of life. And I think these guys do it because they just, well, they believe in, it's, it's, it's your quintessential job, you know? It's, it, and it, if you look at it from another perspective, you know, what else, they, what else are they gonna do that's gonna give them that type of meaning? So you're putting, you're putting food on people's tables and it's a great product and they believe in the product. The folks that are, are here still, that have made, through, made it through all these transitions and all the cuts, they're, they believe in what they're doing. They're not, they're not doing it because it's a job. They believe in the, the cause, so. What is it about fishing? It's hard work, I mean, it's dangerous. Right. 
Well, it's funny, I asked myself that too. One cold day, I was out fishing with my father. And, um, you know, he was out there, it was blowing probably 25, those seas of nine to 10 feet. And, uh, you know, the waves were crashing into the boat, it was splashing into us, and I was freezing. And I was thinking to myself, why does he do this? Why would anybody want to do this? You know, I was still in college, and I was just helping him out on the boat. But I saw, like, the smile on his face, and I saw him, you know, it was just us. You couldn't see anything around you, no land, no other people to bother him. You know, his cell phone was, was off because we were out of service. We were so far away. And uh, he was truly just so happy out there. He was just in his own element and he's doing what he does best. <clears throat> and, uh, and I appreciated that, and I know that there was so much history behind it. His father, his grandfather, all the ancestors that lost their lives or risked their limbs just to feed the people. And, uh, and that really made me appreciate it, you know, just in that moment and, uh, and seeing him so happy in his own element. Where do you see the future of fishing if it goes the way things are going right now? I see just a lot of um, you know hardworking families going out by the wayside, and then just the bigger corporations or the well capitalized, um, you know, taking over. Just fewer boats, and um, you know more corporate owned, which is kind of unfortunate because you know people like that don't care as much as quality uh, or hiring local. Everything just comes to profits and. That's where, when, when things just come down to just profits, you start losing that sense of quality and freshness. Vito, thank you for being on Hometown Talents and Treasures. Thank you very much for having me. That's our show for tonight. Please make sure you join our Facebook page. And if there is someone or an organization you would like to nominate to be featured on Hometown Talents and Treasures, email me. That email address is esternvaida at gmail.com. Remember, it can be anyone. The important thing is that they selflessly donate their talent and time to help others. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>